So hey everybody, welcome back to part two of a small series that I'm doing on one of the flights that we've done for our clients recently over Labor Day weekend. If you have not watched part one of this, go watch part one first and then come here to part two. So in the last one, we talked about the, um, the videos and stills that we imported and our process. So we've got our ortho images. Now we've got pianos too that we'll see about, and that's what, where we left off in the last video was the pianos. We've got our standard stills and we've got our standard video. So normally what I do when we uh, come back from a job site is I offload everything, put, uh, put the uh, files in the respective folders for my workflow process. And then I start in with the ortho mosaic. So I use Metashape to check things out, but I also regularly use web ODM, and that's usually what I use for presentation. But since I thought about doing this video yesterday after offloading, I said, you know what, let's uh, let's go ahead and make the solstice ortho mosaic from yesterday, which is uh, September the 3rd. So there we go. There's our final model. So we imported, let's take a look at this really quick. We imported right up here, 409 images. So we did the north, south, and east, west passes as we showed in the last one. And we went through the full workflow of Metashape. So we aligned the photos, we built the mesh, we built the textured, we built the point cloud, digital elevation model, and ortho mosaic. And so the ortho mosaics are very of, of a lot of interest to our clients normally. Right now we're in the 3D model mode, so we could play around in here, take a look at the model, take a look at the homes, um, also zoom ourselves in on the different features. So as you can see, you know, this is a hillside community that's being built in here. Let's pull this back out. So once we've got everything set, once we've run through the process and it does take a little while, which is you know why I offload these first to get them done first, um, just to have those out of the way. So over in the left-hand side, we've got our images, we've got our tie points, depth maps. You can even take a look at the point cloud if you'd like to examine the point cloud as well. So no mesh on this, still looking pretty nice. Once again, this isn't the primary um, the, the primary piece that our clients want. What they're usually after are these ortho mosaic models. Now, recently I was asked because we do have the before and after ortho mosaic mo models um, on the site. Let's go back to the Solstice project here. And as we scroll down from an earlier one, Here's our August 20th and July 23rd, because I just picked one. And there we go, taking a look at these, at the changes over time. We also expanded our flight path recently, so it's changed just a little bit. But in order to develop this, we use Metashape or we use WebODM, and we export a GeoTIFF. So I'm going to go ahead, close out of Metashape Pro. So or actually, I'll tell you this, once we've got this built, we can go do our exports. So we will do an export model for Sketchfab and we will do an export ortho mosaic for before and after. So, and recently I've had multiple questions from folks about, hey, Rich, how do you do those before and afters? How do you line up those geotiffs? So let's take a look at that. So I already, for uh, for today, for, uh, for putting this all together, I'm gonna be building the web pages today as well. So I already output the August 20th and the September 3rd yesterday. These are the full size geotiffs. So do not give these to your customers. You could Dropbox these them, uh, these to them, but we are not embedding these geotiffs on our website because of this. 1.4 gigabytes. This is a huge file. And you could actually even print these files out. You could wallpaper a room with them. Um, at that size. So August 20th is 1.4 gigs. And then if I get info on the most recent one yesterday, 1.55 gigs on this one. So a little bit has changed there. So what can we do? How do I set up these overlays? You know, this is, this is an, an important part for the clients. Let me make sure I don't have a bunch of other applications on here. Let's just quit notes. All right. This is a huge file. August 20th, ortho mosaic. Let's drag this onto Photoshop. So you're gonna need Photoshop or a similar editor. Affinity Photo can do this for you as well. So we're just waiting for Photoshop to open up and reading the TIFF format is once again, basically 1.5 gigs. 
All right, this first one is August 20th worth of. I'm just gonna go relabel my layer, August 20th worth of. There we go, this is just for my reference. Uh, I'm gonna minimize Photoshop now. We're gonna grab that September, or September 3rd from yesterday. So we'll put that into Photoshop and Photoshop's reading it. So I'm gonna have two open files in Photoshop right now. And there we go. All right, so now we've got two tabs up here. There's the August, and I'm just gonna label this layer September 3rd, just so I know which one is which. And what we're going to do now is I'm gonna go over to the August 20th. I'm going to grab that layer. So over here, there's the layer. I'm going to click on that layer, and I'm gonna drag it on to September. And now, We've got August 20th and September 3rd, and they're not perfectly lined up right now. See, I'm moving August 20th around. But if I highlight both of these in Photoshop's layers, and then we go over to Edit, and we can auto-align the layers. Now, my clients aren't looking to take measurements or anything off of this. They just want an indicator of what's changed since the last site visit. That's the big part that we're after here. Now, we're recording, and okay, so we're doing good. We're, we're recording with OPS right now, and we just opened two massive files. So, you know, things might be running a little slow. Right now, what we're looking at, so once again, I'm looking over at my layers panel here, um, and we've got August 20th turned on, there's the little I, and September 3rd's turned on, but it's hidden behind August 20th. Let's zoom that out. And what we're going to do is unclick. So we're going to turn off that little eyeball there. All right. So now we're seeing September 3rd. Now we're seeing August 20th. By the way, August 20th was an overcast day. Um, so lighting was very muted. And then yesterday, September 3rd, was not an overcast day. So you can see the change in the color of these. And that is something that happens from ortho to ortho. It all depends on your time of day and you know the ambient light that's out there right now on an overcast day the shadows are muted you can see more detail of things um on just a high sunday you're probably going to have bigger shadows and that can cause other problems but so right here there's august 20th and there is september 3rd and we can also let's go ahead and just take a zoom in here by the way we're viewing this at 6.25 percent um so I'm getting further and further in. And let's go take a look over at, uh, this is site 47. This is a new site 48. And we're looking at August 20th. I'm going to unclick the eye. And now we can see that the footings and some of the concrete have already started in September. Look at how nicely these blend together. So these are aligned nearly perfectly. However you export your ortho images, you want to make sure that the sizes are pretty much the same. So if you're using WebODM, um, you want to make sure that when you do your exports and you look at the two exports, that they match up pretty close. If you use other settings, they might not align so well. So that's going to need to become part of your workflow process too, how you want to work on that. Now, you know, one of the other things, let's just take a look down here because I found one item interesting here. I'm going to turn off August and now we're in September and Look at the changes in here. So this this really did have some major change. Not too much in these buildings, but as we go along here, let's go ahead and turn off August. So we're looking at September. You know, some uh, some differences for sure. And I think I might have just misaligned these. So <laughs> I'm gonna zoom myself out and see if I messed up the alignment. I sure did. I dragged the top. Look at that. So that's one of the other things that you're probably going to want to do. You're going to lock, want to lock some things in place. So now I'm going to go back to edit again, auto align those layers. So I messed up there by just dragging one of the layers. So you always want to make sure that you've got them and then you can lock them as well. But the next step that's really going to happen here is we're going to export this as a JPEG, a much smaller JPEG, okay? So um, because of how huge this is, this isn't going to play well. You're not going to want this on your website at all. Um, you'll want the smaller version. So now let's click out here and everything is perfectly lined up again. Okay, I was noticing that that was weird. So what I would do here is I would export 
um, the August 20th, and then I'd hide the August 20th, and I'd export the September 3rd. I'd export both of them as JPEGs, and then the final JPEGs can get loaded into the presentation page later. Now, I'm not going to, I don't think we should take you through the save right now, or you know what? We're just doing this casually. This is what I do if you weren't here watching over my shoulder. Oh, but I just remembered I need to put labels down there too. So probably later on in this, I'll just show you the JPEGs as they go in. But bottom line, we're going to resize this. And let's also see, just to give you an idea here, the image size is 25,577 pixels by 16,398. Um, this is a big file. Let's just look at it in terms of inches, 355 by 227 at 72 DPI. So we can definitely, we've got a lot of room to ratchet this down and then the uh, clients can work with it from there. So, all right, I'm going to close Photoshop and I'll do that part for myself later. So don't save, don't save. Now, once I had those done, I could start working on the web page building too. So we'd be, you know, two JPEG files for the before and the after based on the dates and we align them, make the JPEGs. After we're done with the JPEGs, the next part that we would jump into is actually getting into our video. So we'll talk about that too. Because what I normally do is I'll get all of my deliverables ready. So those JPEGs, um, the videos, and then the stills. I'll get all those things prepped and then I'll load them into the website afterward. So that's that's normal process. So in here though, I already know what to expect with my 005 solstice, 98 feet. And if I open this one up, this is just, it's getting itself lined up. So this is a waypoint mission from the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So now it's getting itself turned around here. I made a fake waypoint and um, the reason why I made the first waypoint a fake is because the M3E is a little weird when it comes to the waypoint missions. Now, here is the normal, this is the normal path that I take. And this path lines up with videos from previous visits. So this is visit number 21. And so we do have all of that still saved uh, for the client so that we can overlay them over time. Maybe we'll go all the way back to January and show April and show July and blend them all together in Final Cut Pro. So you may be noticing this, you may not. I'm still not super excited with the M3E's video uh, performance. It's a little jittery in here. I know that I can take that out with stabilization. But it seems like the gimbal itself is a little jittery. And, you know, we don't have many options for our flights. We can do 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second, or we can do 4K at 30 frames a second, and the files are export as an MP4. That's our whole amount of um, setup that we can do in video on this. Now, you also notice this is going really slow. Usually, we have this at about double speed, but I just wanted you to see this one. So this is one of our earliest flight paths from way back when we set up this project last October. And so as you can see, we're getting right through the whole neighborhood. The next one, the 30 feet above ground level, um, similar, but not quite the same. So once again, I set up a, a separate flight path and I actually imported from Litchi through a very unique set of tools, um, my Litchi flight path. So here we go, it's taking off now, and this is the standard flight of this area as well. So as it's moving around, and you'll see there's little jumps and little divots that were not on the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, I'm gonna notice it. The clients have not noticed it yet. Um, I, you know, I let them know we're using a new drone, but I didn't tell them, you know, anything changing with the path. So we still have the path, but some of these turns, some of these coordinated turns, um, these curved turns don't seem to be functioning so well off of the Mavic 3. I think it's going to be a little more experimentation. You can see the little jerks um, right here with this ground level part so far. And it's a little dip, 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 just some stuttering, I'd say, basically. Um, so one of the things we will be speeding this up. And once again, we'll be stabilizing this. So I will take this video and the last video that you saw, I will bring them into Final Cut Pro, and then I will get them aligned for um, 
for the flight. Now, we also did a couple of extra videos per one of the engineer's requests. They wanted a top-down video. They are very specific video. Um, we're also giving them the ortho and the full-sized ortho, but they wanted a top-down video. And so right now we're on the western side of the property and we are flying east. So this one is moving along nicely. It's uh, pretty jitter-free. And we did set up a new flight path for this one um, while we were actually flying this. So next time around, I can come out and replicate the same exact thing again. So it brings me out to the other neighborhood. We get the turn going here. And you can also see the golf course is right over here on our left, so south of us. So now we're flying east to west. Um, the bottom of the screen being east and the top of the screen being west. To the south of us is that... Uh, that set of uh, golf tees right in there. There we go. So moving back up. So this is also going to be developed as well as part of this project. So they just asked for a little additional flight. And once again, I am going to be giving them the full size GeoTIFF. We'll package that up on Dropbox, have them download it. And that way they can process it in their own software as well. So one more video here. There we go. Um, and this one was just catching the tail end of the last one. So we'll go ahead and close that one down as well. So there we go. The next step for me on this would be actually, and I'll just let you see this, um, and then I'm going to go back through and fully work on it myself here. But the next part, hey, missing file. I know. I deleted that file this morning. I'll deal with that later. All right. So if I scroll all the way up, we have several libraries in our Final Cut Pro right now. There's our Mavic 3 Enterprise class that's coming together, our 2022 stuff. There it is, our Solstice Project 2023. And as you can see with uh, these, we've got a lot of those. Just to get this off the screen, I'm going right down here really quick. And I'm moving that old event to trash. There we go. We'll close that up. So there is our whole list for Solstice right now, and we'll be making a Solstice 2024 when that time comes. But the uh, the next video that I will be producing will look something similar to this. So this is my Solstice, August 20th. And as you can see, we have that similar flight path. We also have little pop-ups in here so that people know where they are, Site 42, Site 43. And so this is a nice little... Uh, motion tracker plugin um and let's take a look the name of that one because i know people always ask me for the names afterward uh is call out pop so you can make a bunch of different motion tracking call outs and you got a lot to choose from but that is what's making these cool little site labels here for us is that call out pop so there is a fair amount of editing before we get those deliverables up for our clients on the website as well and you're going to need to expect that if you're doing multiple types of flights for your clients when you're on the job location, then you're going to be worrying about 3D models, ortho mosaics, um, video flight paths, still flight paths, maybe even adding in these panoramas and more. So there's still a lot of features that we've only scratched the surface of. But as you can see, bringing this one out here, I just feel that this is smoother. We do have it stabilized as well. But um, so that next step is going to be setting up one of these flights and getting them exactly where you want them and then also uploading to the web for your final page presentation. All right, I think we should probably stop right here so that we don't go too much further over time. And in the next video, we're just gonna take a look. We're gonna talk about the stills really quick and uh, some of the things that they can do with the stills. And finally, after all that, then I will go assemble these things and you will then see um, how the assembly comes together on our webpage. We do have a full course series about this at classes.azdrone.net, um, building your own custom deliverable web pages for drone operators if you want to check that as well. All right, so now we're going to be heading to, uh, to video number three in just a moment uh, where we'll talk about some cleanup and some other details and then I'll get to work on this again.